Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a discrete random variable using the TI Inspire graphing calculator. The formulas are listed in case you want to do hand calculations. In order to find the mean, what you would have to do is you would take each of the individual values, multiply it by each of the individual probabilities, and then find the sum of that value. The variance is found by taking each individual value, subtracting the mean, squaring the deviations, and then multiplying it by the individual probabilities. You would then sum up all of those results to find the variance. To get the standard deviation, you would take the square root of the variance. This is something that becomes very time consuming, especially if you have a large data set. With this small data set, it wouldn't be that cumbersome. But what I'm going to do is show you how to use the TI Inspire to find all of these values. The first thing that we want to do is you can start from the home screen, start with a new document. Um, that's up to you, but we're going to use a spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, we're going to name our variables. So I'm just going to use X um, for the first one. And then I would put in my values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then I would do the same thing with um, the next row for my probability of X. I'm just going to call it PRB for probability. You can call it whatever you want to. And then I'm just going to arrow down and I'm going to put in all of my individual probabilities. So the 0 0.02, 0 0.08, 0 0.17, 0 0.53, and 0.2. So we always check to make sure that our data was entered correctly because if we put it in incorrectly, then you're going to get the wrong answer every single time. So what we're going to do after this is I like to work. You could do it directly in this screen, but I feel like sometimes it gets too crowded. So I control I and I add a calculator screen. And on the calculator screen, I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to go down to statistics and stat calculations. So that was menu statistics, stat calculations, and I'm going to choose option one, one variable statistics. Even though I have information in two lists, I'm only really finding the one list. It's just going to be a weighted mean. So I leave it as one. And for my X1 list, I'm going to choose the variable. I just hit the right arrow and I'm going to scroll down to choose X, my variable X. And this is where we need to use the frequency list. The frequency list is where we put our probabilities. So I would scroll over or right arrow over to pick the probability variable, and then I'm going to select OK. On this screen, again, a lot of information comes up, and this is where you have to understand when to use X bar and mu. Because of the fact that we are dealing with a um, probability distribution function here. We actually have a probability distribution set up. Um, we do use the symbol mu because we're talking about the entire population. This is 100% of the data values. So you have to remember to use mu for the mean. The calculator always uses x bar because as far as the calculations go, they are found the same way. But the calculator doesn't change to mu. So you as an individual have to understand when do I use mu and when do I use x bar. Since this is a population, anytime you're finding um, the mean of a random discrete variable, it is going to be mu that is used. And then you would just put your value down. So in this case, it's 3.81. So the mean of these is 3.81. And if you look at it, that makes sense because 53% of our data values fell at four. So that was the largest outcome. Um, the mean will always get pulled down towards the tail since there's a lower end down here. It would be slightly to the left of the four since there's less information over here. Um, but it's going to be really close to four because of the fact that we have an average or this has the highest probability of happening. For the variance, you do have to find the standard deviation first. The calculator does not give you this. It gives you sigma, but not sigma squared. So what we would do is we would find the standard deviation first, and then we would go back and square that value 
to find the variance. So sigma is this value right here. If you notice the sample standard deviation is actually undefined, because we are dealing with a weighted mean and we're dealing with a population, 100% um, of our data points are represented. So the sample standard deviation is undefined. We only find the population standard deviation for these. So we would write this value down, the nine point sorry, the point nine one three two. So on average, each of these points deviates from the mean by almost one unit. Um, this is a very small data set, one, two, three, four, five, so there's not a lot of variability, so that's why the standard deviation is so low. So to find the variance, like I said, what we would do is we would take the point nine one three two and we would square this value. And you don't want to square the rounded version. If you do try to square the rounded version, and I actually typed this into my calculator, um, it's going to get me something very close to, but it's not going to be as accurate as using the stored variable in your calculator. So what we can do is click the variable tab and then scroll down until we find the stat.sigmax. So it's stat.sigmax, and then we would square it. So um, I know that it's kind of hard to see that, so let me come over here and write that down. So for variance, you hit the var button that represents variables, and then you scroll down until you find the stat dot sigma x. So what this is saying, it's the statistics variables, and we're specifically looking at the um, population standard deviation. So for this, we would plug this after we hit squared, um, the x squared button, it would give us our variance of 0.8339. So again, with this, we were looking at finding the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. This does have to be a discrete distribution. Uh, you would do something different for um, if you have a continuous random variable. As always, thanks for watching.